I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews with Aaron Leibowitz, the product manager of Certic. Aaron, welcome to the show and thanks for taking the time to be here. Hey Ashton, great to be here. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into Certic. There's been a lot of uh, things going on in the cryptocurrency industry that Certic is deeply involved in. And I think that it's great to have you on the show at this time. So if we could just kick it off by understanding more of an overview of what is Certic and what are the solutions that you're providing, that would be great. Absolutely. So Certic, we are best known as a blockchain security firm uh, known for audits. We've audited a bunch of top projects, recently been pretty deep in DeFi and especially the BSC ecosystem. Uh, beyond just auditing and you know manual code reviews and penetration testing, we do have a few other products. Uh, we have an insurance alternative called Certic Shield, that is a uh, reimbursement protection for digital assets. Uh, we open those up with the projects themselves and offer them to their communities. Mm -hmm. We also have our Skynet toolchain, which is a on-chain uh, smart contract security monitor. Mm -hmm. It monitors after a code has been deployed, which is a big point of uh, pain for audits themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, audits are a snapshot in time. They are not mm -hmm. constant ongoing after a code has been deployed. So this tool chain monitors actually when it is uh, in the wild interacting with other smart contracts mm -hmm. and looking for known vulnerabilities. That's great. And yeah, it's great to see that you have a variety of products. Um, and I have seen a lot of these DeFi startups, I you know, being audited by, by Certic. So in, maybe you could just give me a, a walkthrough of Let's just say I'm a company that is, I have a DeFi project and I'm just starting. I reach out to Certic to get assistance. You know, how exactly are you there to help my DeFi startup? Absolutely. So auditing has become um, pretty much an industry standard over the last few years. Uh, that's a big shift that we pride ourselves on being a part of at Certic, uh, having really changed the landscape from you know, audits used to be above and beyond. Now they're the standard for being listed on exchanges. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Certic is here to provide auditing, penetration testing, manual code review for those blockchain startups. Uh, one big tip I would like to give to blockchain companies is if you're working on a project, reach out ahead of time, not day or two before uh, you're going live asking for an audit. It's a really mm -hmm. big help. Definitely, definitely. And I know that uh, in the DeFi space, Aave, which is one of the largest uh, DeFi platforms, and I think it's the largest, and also Kava, who we've had on the show a few times, are secured by Certic. Um, and I'm guessing that you've done the audits for those contracts, but maybe you're also working with them on a continuous basis, and maybe you could touch on that? Um, yeah, absolutely. So as you mentioned, those are two awesome projects, huge teams uh, committed to security for sure from our point of view. Uh, Kava, they have an active Certic shield with us which is that reimbursement protection I was mentioning before. Mm -hmm. uh, it means if you do hold Kava tokens, you can come to Certic, you can purchase protection uh, in the event of a hack or theft, um, some on-chain activity that's covered. Mm -hmm. You can submit a claim and potentially get reimbursed for your loss. Oh, that's really interesting. So just as a, you know, as just an investor in the project, not necessarily being a part of the project, you can come to Certic as well, is that right? Exactly that. Uh, retail investors, institutional investors alike, uh, project owners can all come mm. and use the Certic Shield ecosystem. Mm, that's really interesting, and uh, because I, I don't think a lot of investors are aware of that. You know, they they by the they think that oh, uh, you know, Kava is protected by Certic, so that's good enough for me. And uh, so for that's... sure, that is um, definitely something that we've been trying to get more investors to understand is mm -hmm. that they do have options to protect themselves beyond trusting just the project itself. Totally. Um, that is a relatively newer product from us. So people that know us from years past, we wouldn't have offered that solution at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you also mentioned Aave, uh, another great product, project, product too, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so those guys as well have been audited by us and they actually use that Skynet tool chain to monitor their smart contracts as mm -hmm. they're uh, in use. That's great. And yeah, they have like billions of dollars, uh, you know, in, involved with Aave. So obviously you're going to need that high level of protection. And, and speaking of you know, billions of dollars, do you have the same amount of security for a project that has, you know, billions of dollars being protected to whereas there's, you know, a DeFi startup might have a few hundred thousand or a million in, in liquidity? Uh, you know, if a 
any project comes and gets audited by us, uses our tool chain or uh, Certic Shield, it's going to be the same process regardless mm -hmm. of who you are. We are committed to security with all of the projects we work with. So no um, differentiated treatment. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you know, even with audits, um, there are still you know potentially flaws in in smart contracts uh, that some sometimes things happen, right? And there have been hacks in some of these DeFi projects. You know, Wifey had some vulnerabilities. Alpha and most recently Paid Network uh, had a vulnerability in their smart contract, or at least you know somehow the private keys or access was was given to uh, a party that shouldn't have had it. Um, and maybe you can talk about those situations and what happens when a project does get hacked or, or uh, penetrated somehow and, and how Certic is there to help. For sure. Um, you know, those are three really good examples of different types of exploits. Um, you mentioned sort of smart contract failure. In the paid network instance, it's actually not the case. Uh, you mm -hmm. started to talk into private key mismanagement. It's mm -hmm. unclear exactly um, how that happened at this time, but the private keys to the minting contract seem to have been handed over to a third party or accessed by a third party. Um, I think they're still doing some internal investigations trying to figure out what exactly happened there. Mm -hmm. uh, guys are known as a pretty reputable team, so definitely um, something that we're keeping an eye on. We've actually put out a little uh, post-mortem on the incident. Mm -hmm. uh, however, not all of the information is available at this time, so hard to say. Uh, but as for how Certic helps, how we can step in, where we can be useful, um, I think that you've got, you know, you mentioned this auditing is obviously an important first step. It's by no means a perfect solution. Uh, I think you talk to any of the top auditors, they'll be the first to tell you, hey, like, we did a really strong audit, we mm -hmm. pen tested this, it, uh, everything looks good from our side. That doesn't mean we're going to guarantee that it's perfect. Mm -hmm. This is, um, you know, code can be changed before deployment, which actually seems to be the case when we looked mm -hmm. at the code and paid network versus what we had audited. Mm -hmm. There was something injected after the audit before deployment um, that was not there during the audit. You know, as I said, it's yeah. a snapshot at a point in time. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pretty impossible for an auditor to deal with that or to mitigate that the potential for that solution. Um, you know, going back to that Skynet tool chain I was talking about, that is one of the reasons that we have these on-chain monitoring and even after attack reimbursement protection mm -hmm. uh, options, because we realize that it's not a perfect solution. So we're trying to get to this point of having end-to-end -end security for everyone in DeFi. Definitely. And DeFi has been growing so quickly and you know the NFT space as well. But specifically in DeFi, there's a lot of retail investors that, you know, they see the hype surrounding projects and you know it looks to be a really strong project and in their minds, they don't really have you know that auditing process as uh, you know one of the things that they find necessary. You know they f they still invest in projects that aren't audited, and sometimes they fall into scams or rug pulls and you know exit scams, things like that. Um, and it seems like it's pretty common. You know, uh, I, I find these retail investors in, in groups that I'm in, they they just go in anyway, right? Um, so do you have any advice for retail investors? Uh, and people that are just everyday investors looking at projects um, and to, to avoid, you know, getting scammed or getting rug pulled? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There are some great tips. It, at the end of the day, it does come down to a do your own research. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone has heard that phrase before uh, from, you know, anyone in DeFi will tell you DYOR is the key to the space. Uh, however, what that entails can be different for a lot of people. So when doing your research, um, looking for things like, has the project been audited? Has it been audited mm -hmm. by a reputable firm? There are mm -hmm. some, uh, you know, companies out there that will, they print audit certificates more than they actually mm -hmm. audit the code. Maybe they use some uh, automated chain to review the code. Um, it's, it's not the same as getting audited by a reputable firm. And there are many great auditors out there. Uh, we are in a space where, you know, you really have some great security options. Mm -hmm. uh, so looking at that, Looking at, um, you know, in key storage and token management, uh, hardware wallets are the sort of standard recommended uh, security protocol for holding your tokens. Um, avoiding rug pulls, though, it's it can be difficult. Um, it's, it's no small thing. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they've been a successful type of scam. 
uh, projects can take all of the right steps, do a you know a fair launch, have gotten audited, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, if they hold the keys to some of these contracts, they can choose to do whatever they'd like. Uh, if they're gonna exit scam rug pull, it's it's a difficult one to avoid. It really does come mm -hmm. down to looking at reputation of founders. Mm -hmm. And with and on dev teams, even behind some great projects, it makes it only more difficult. So definitely it's a tough question. Yeah, yeah, and especially because it's at early, you know, an early stage project. Usually, uh, the exit scams not happening. You know, for well established companies, years in, it's something that you know has only had weeks or months of of history, and there's only so much you can base your decision off of when, when you're investing in those projects. So I, I understand what you're saying there, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, now I know that Certic is partnered with you know, a lot of different companies in the space. Maybe you can mention some of the partnerships that you're working with and if there's any partnerships ideally that you're looking to work with in the future as the DeFi space grows. So uh, we've had some great partnerships over the last few months. Uh, you know, DuckDAO, Kylan Network, mm -hmm. uh, the BSC. And that last one is really where we're focused recently. We've been mm -hmm. uh, diving into the BSC community, really trying to um, secure all of these projects that we can. Uh, there are tons of new ones popping up there every day. Uh, so it's been very busy for us in that space. Um, yeah, it was a nice partnership for us to make with the Binance Smart Chain team in order to you know, uh, really get behind and secure as many of these projects that are working with them as possible that are building on there. Definitely. It seems like there's been a huge uptick uh, with Binance Smart Chain projects, and in part because you know the Ethereum uh, transaction fees and the clogged network is just not uh, doing very well, especially when there is a popular you know, initial uh, launch of a coin and then the network gets clogged and people are paying you know, the same if they're putting in $200 into an investment and the transaction fee is $200. That's obviously not feasible for uh, retail investors, you know, paying double. Um, and do you foresee this trend to continue where you're going to be working with even more projects um, on Binance Smart Chain and just DeFi projects throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, I believe so. I think that we're, you know, it feels like we've been in this bull run for a while now. It's been a pretty short couple months so far. Uh, I personally foresee the bull market continuing and if it's any indication, history is any indication, that means we're going to see tons of new projects cropping up, mm -hmm. uh, lots and lots of innovation investment in the space. Mm -hmm. So assuming that's the case, absolutely. We will be uh, looking to work with as many of these new projects as we can. Um, yeah. Great. And do you and your team have any uh, roadmap milestones in terms of potentially new products or uh, new pathways as you continue to grow in Certic? You know, that's a, that's a good question. What are our milestones for 2021? I think that we are, um, we've experienced some very big growth so far this year and we're hoping mm -hmm. to continue that. Um, you know, some internal targets for a uh, number of projects audited, things like that. As far as new products on the horizon, I think that we're really trying to uh, fine tune our product suite in order to sort of create this end to end protection that I was talking about. And mm -hmm. as you mentioned, let retail investors know about the ability for them to protect themselves in that way. Totally. And, you know, a lot of the audits that we actually have seen recently are community driven. We go into these Telegram channels and we see the communities are really getting strong on their research asking, hey, have you guys been audited? Who mm -hmm. audited you? Uh, when's the audit going to be finished? All these types of questions that make me yeah. personally happy to see. Oh, that's great to hear. And, and on the flip side, you know, are there other challenges or obstacles that you anticipate overcoming uh, as you work towards you know, mainstream adoption of these auditing processes? Absolutely. Um, you know, we mentioned before retail investors taking the CERTIC or other top uh, firm, even just that we're onboarding a new project, uh -huh. haven't even gotten to review the code yet. They take that as a, uh, you know, a blue check mark to go ahead and invest in the project. Uh -huh. And we've seen and we're wary of the possibility of seeing other projects or potential scams use that as a way to make investors more comfortable, these people who are starting to do their own mm -hmm. research. So we're being um, more, we're doing more internal research on the teams before we're starting these audits and 
are making sure that we're comfortable um, putting our seal of approval, not just on the code, but trying to look into the people behind it. Definitely. And I could see how, you know, uh, a, a DeFi startup might reach out to you and all of a sudden you're like, this is not you know, a good project. You know, you're the ones auditing it and all of a sudden there's 100 red flags. Uh, you know, th that would be interesting to see, okay, Certic puts out the audit and the audit is horrible, right? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there are a lot of DeFi projects that are coming out that will need your services. And also just with the Certic Shield um, for retail investors, to get involved with Certic as well. What's the best way for all these parties to learn more and to get involved with the Certic community? It's a good question. I think that the number one thing that retail investors should do is go and visit Certic.org. It's our security leaderboard. You'll see all of the projects we've audited, the ones that have Shield, the ones that have Skynet. Um, our full auditing reports are all listed on there. You can uh, you know, click through and get to the Shield and start protecting your own tokens, mm -hmm. but just as much use that as a resource for your own research. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Aaron. Uh, all the best with Certic moving forward in this space at this time, and let's follow up in the near future. Great. Thank you so much, Ashton.